season? The season, yes. Um, when you go back and start from July last year, it's certainly, we've had quite a bit of volatility. I think it's been geared around, um, well, we saw a New Zealand dollar at 88, for example. Today it's around 74 and a half, which is quite a movement in that time. Um, so we had the wool price actually peaked. I'm talking for cross, the majority of the clip, which is crossbreds, as we know, which is about 75% of it. The indicator peaked around October, September, October, and since then it's, it's come down, but it's probably come down about 10%. So it hasn't been so bad. That has happened on the back of more supply hitting the market. And through those months of January, February, March, which are the peak supply months, the market's held up very well, actually. And uh, the recent sale last week was surprisingly strong, in my view. And so that augurs well for the rest of the season. So I think it's been a, it's been a pretty satisfactory season. Um, <coughs> New Zealand carpet wools are still in good demand. Um, Obviously, as we've talked about before, we have to compete with other origins all around the world, UK, um, Middle East, and et cetera, et cetera, who, which all have different attributes to New Zealand, mm -hmm. which I'm happy to say New Zealand will, as far as vegetable matter, strength, colour, et cetera, et cetera, is still superior, but at the end of the day, it has a price point, and it can only be blended in so much of a percentage-wise to meet that price point. So... All in all, I think it's been a satisfactory season. I, and I, as I said just before, I think it's uh, the market, if anything, I think will strengthen towards the end of June. That's pretty good news. Now, you mentioned strength. We've had a very hot, dry season. Does mm. that, have you had breaks in at all? Well, that, it's, whenever the animal comes under stress, we know the wool fibre actually is one of the first things that are affected because it actually stops growing and then mm. starts again. So you get the break which leads to tenderness, which leads to um, a lesser value product, if you like. Um, we haven't seen too much of that uh, in the South Island, um, but the, there's no doubt there would have been effects. Um, I think the main effect, obviously, will be sheep numbers maybe next year. Um, capital stock, as you mentioned before, I don't think we've got a real handle on that, but there will be an effect of the drought that we've seen, particularly in the South Island because that's the sheep numbers quietly disappearing. They were low anyway. They were, but there'll be an extra, there'll be an extra amount of capital stock that have been killed through this drought period. Um, I think it's safe to say no one really has a real handle on sheep numbers in New Zealand. We think they're around 27, 28 million as we speak. Um, the effect of the drought still has to be seen in my view, and that will, you'll probably have more of a picture on that next season. Supply and demand is what you were just talking about. Yeah. If, if our sheep numbers drop and they still want that percentage of New Zealand wool, mm. is that going to drive the price up a wee bit? Well it, well, it should help. Obviously it should help the price. It's a positive thing. But I'm very wary of forecasting big price rises for New Zealand carpet wools because, as I say, at the end of the day, even though it's a superior fibre in many ways, which it is, there's no doubt about that, but it still has to compete from as far as when a manufacturer or a carpet maker or whatever is looking to buy, he, st he still has to compete as well. And mm. he can only ever buy, pay, so much for the New Zealand portion of the product that he's trying to make. Um, we've seen gyrations in the past, over the past decade, where New Zealand wool has gone very high. And invariably what it leads to when you get spikes is people going back out, going out, to other fibres, to man-made fibres, to whatever, and a lot of them never come back. And that's that's the reality of what happens, and I think we've seen that hmm. in the wool industry over the years. So um, so you've got to be very mindful of, of that fact. Prince Charles isn't helping much? I think, I think it's all helping, Rob. Um, very hard to measure, very hard to measure. There's a lot of good stuff going on there, but very hard to measure. But... Um, as I say, I think um, when you look back over the last 12 months, I think things are going along pretty well, really, considering all factors. Are the sheep farmers on hold a wee bit? Because they've sort of been moved back a bit and there's a lot of the guys on the plains are doing dairy support or have changed their, their mode of farming. Mm -hmm. Well, I think 
It's an interesting picture, isn't it? When you think about what's going on in the dairy sector, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and obviously dairy is responsible for a lot of the land being lost to sheep. Mm. Um, now, how elastic that is as far as more sheep coming back onto the land is a very interesting question. I would suggest it's not because of the capital investment that's been made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, meat seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, in response to the price question you um, gave me before, you know, if we do see returns lift, will that mean more sheep? I'm not sure about that. I don't think there'll be a significant move back to sheep. I don't, because I just fear that that land's been lost forever. I don't know what you think about that. But my thought, seriously, yeah. is a positive, is that you cull your worst stock when times are hard. Mm. So therefore, what we've got left as a national flock is a very, very good quality flock. Yes, yeah. And that's as so far as wool as well as meat. So mm. a great base to build out again. Oh, definitely. Um, I, think, I think the biggest question mark in my mind is just the, what happens to dairy in the next few years. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we'll lose dairying so much. But no, the dairying no, support, but it might. Dairying support might change. Correct. That's right. Correct. And uh, <clears throat> so there could be a bit of capacity there for sheep to improve numbers. I think uh, looking out, say, for next season, I don't see any reason um, for lesser returns. A lot hinges around the current. I mean, if you see a uh, New Zealand currency at 70 to the US, it will make a difference. At the moment, unfortunately, we're at highs against the euro. We're at 71, or it's been just it over 70. 50, didn't it? Correct. It's been <coughs> huge movement. Uh, strengthen, strengthening against the euro, and that certainly has had an effect as far as European businesses are concerned. So what I'm saying is if that changes significantly, it will certainly affect the NZ cent price for wool. So there's a few, as usual, there's a few things out there that may, may happen that could be very positive. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. You're referring to carpet, but what about mid-micron and, and fine? Fine... Um, it's a wee bit out of my um, expertise, but the fine wool grower, I think, is, is suffering. Um, he's not getting the returns to justify um, his investment, if you like. And finer merinos, obviously, the weights are less because of that's because the way. Of the season. Yeah, or that's the breed. That's the that's the way fine. You usually get finer and less wool weights, so, and and it's basically his main source of income. I think the fine. Merino grower is struggling. The coarser end of the merinos is more positive, around the 19, 20, 21. Um, the half-bred farmers, I think, are having a reasonable year. Because they were written off at one point. They were written off by the McKenzie report, <laughs> probably that? about 15 years ago. And he's, he's still, his name is still mentioned in hushed tones in the corners of sheds. <laughs> <laughs> McKenzie. Yeah, yeah, because McKinsey report just about what it did. Oh, it recommended that they get out of it, do something else. Yeah, no question about it. It was proved wrong. Correct. John Dawson, thank you very much indeed. Yeah.